about to cook some bacon and try not to start a grease fire with his tears. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thank you to, and I got to enlarge this just to make sure that I get it correct. Uh, thank you to IBS Jello Cats. IBS Jello Cats for that catchphrase submission. And welcome to Comedy Bang Bang for another week. Uh, Mid Navi Doggy, and uh, I believe this is Hump Week of Navi Doggy, and uh, 2020 is almost in the books. And won't that be great when it is in the rear view? Uh, but not until we listen to this show. And by we, I mean you, uh, because I'm listening to it as it happens. Um, coming up a little later on the show, by the way, my name is Scott Ackerman, and I'm coming up right now, and in fact, in the past. Uh, I am the host of the show, and we have uh, a great show. We have uh, an educator coming up. We have someone in food service. Oh, we have a plumber, someone in custodial services. Uh, and we also have uh, three entertainers who are going to be on the show with us as well. So a jam-packed show, uh, six guests and myself. Uh, boy, this is a lot to get through. So uh, please stick with it all the way to the end and uh, show your work. Please send me any pictures of you uh, uh, with <laughs> your podcast app at the very end of the uh, of the program, just so I can check your work and make sure that uh, you listen to the very end. Well, speaking of the very end, uh, this is the opposite of it. Uh, this is the very beginning of the show, and we should get to our first guests. They are the aforementioned entertainers. They have a television program which is out on Wednesday on Netflix worldwide. Everywhere uh, across the world, it's probably in various different languages. I would imagine 60 different languages. So uh, even if you can't understand what I'm saying right now, I hope you can understand that it's in a language that you will understand. The show is called Auntie Donna's Big Ol' House of Fun. It's a sketch show. Please welcome the Auntie Donna boys, Broden Kelly, Zach Ruane, and Mark Bonanno. Hello, guys. Hello. Hello. G'day, big fella. How you doing, Scott? <laughs> yeah, you Bloody know, good Scotty. to be here. So good to be here. I love It's good to be here, Scott. It's hard to sing along and get a... Rhythm going singing. on Zoom. Scott. Wait, is that singing? Is, is that what you consider singing, really? Because it, it seemed very monotone. And- um, well, if you watch, uh, when, when you watch the show, you'll see that um, that is most of our singing. We do Got some it. musical comedy and um, we tried singing. I think we gave it a crack around the mid, mid-career and it was just yeah. like, let's just stick to this sort of talking. So you, you like to thing. stick to the note that's just instead of do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, you like to stick to do. Yeah, yeah, or like a duh. <laughs> Not even a folder. I will say this about monotone singing is, and, you know, do you know who people thought was, were too monotone and, you know, weren't great singers? Who's that? Beetle. <laughs> Be- Beetle. Beetle. They thought they were no good and then they came back from germ and people <laughs> lost their mind. So, so Beetle, people didn't like Beetle. No. Joe, Pa and Ring um, and J. <laughs> They were all uh, everyone. Of everyone course. would like the Beatle. They can't. They would play. They would play in a little bar in German, and they would go German <laughs> in, and at, liver. At the back of that bar, they played in liver first. They a did play liver. Go, they, they, came, they came from there, I believe. Yes, yeah, they, they came, came from, from liver. liver. Yeah, they went to German in the cave. Just, <laughs> yes, in the, liver, cave. in the cave in germ. In, in germ. germ. No, no, the cave is in live. The cave is in live. The cave, cave is in live. live. Oh, okay. But in, in Germ, they played... Uh... Germ was where they got, is where they got real goo. Real goo, the germs, yeah. The Germs <laughs> were just like, goo. no, thank you. This is bad, monotone. They're singing right. duh and nothing else. Well, it could have been the language difference. Mm. Absolutely. I think mm. that was the problem. Do you know who was the original drummer of... Beetle. Of Beetle? Uh, yeah. I've, al- I've, I've already forgotten that. I know I knew it once. Peter... Dinklage. <laughs> what? Really? Yeah. Peter yeah. Dinklage. What was the matter? Throne. He it had Game really of Thrones on. <laughs> oh, I see. So he got the Game of Thrones part and he left Beetle? Well, yeah. they saw him in Station Agent and they thought, this guy is superb. Uh, <laughs> of course, he, does, he doesn't drum in Station Agent, but he, they were just like, this guy's got it. This performance is so wonderful. It's so powerful. And then, and then, um, and then they just had a sit down about seven years in. He said, I got this big offer from, from the dragon show. And they were like, well, that's your choice, man. That that was the working title. That was the working title at the time was the dragon, the dragon show. Yeah. Yeah, Starring the dragons. Yes. (laughs) Starring all the dragons. (laughs) 
But then they realized there were more dragons in the world that weren't in the show, and they're like, oh, mm. man, we can't call it that anymore. <laughs> well, Dragon Heart sued, so that was... Oh, cool. right. Yeah. Guys, you are... Uh, welcome to the show. You, uh, This is the first time you've ever been on Comedy Bang Bang, and uh, but not the first time we are meeting. Is that correct? Yeah, yes. 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 You seem very yes. unsure about it. I was, I, I'm in your show. I produced your show. You, you, I, you remember meeting oh, me, Oh, that right? was you. <laughs> I played the police officer. Oh, man. I, th- I, I thought that was um, someone else. Wayne Gretzky? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I thought it was Wayne Gretzky. I thought it was a lot one, of people. One of the million other ugly you. people that people send me on Twitter saying, this is, oh, this is you, right? Scott, you are so handsome. Get out of here. Oh, you thank know you. you. You know, you look like Twitter is the worst Twitter. Like, hey, you know you look like this terribly ugly person? Thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate I that. Get, I get Rasputin a lot. Yeah, that's the that's the historical one figures. You have a historical beard, do <laughs> Thank you not? Thank you so much. <laughs> but at what point, Mark, did your beard grow out to historical length? Sometime in the past, right in history. Sometimes, <laughs> sometime in history, um, uh, I hit about uh, twenty, about twenty three, twenty three, and, and then me? it got it got <laughs> and me. <laughs> That, I, that's, uh, that should be a show. You know how uh, – now, I don't know. You guys are from uh, uh, Melbourne, Australia, but I, I don't know whether you sure. have shows like Grace Under Fire out there. But that should be a show, 23 and Me, and it should be like a robot named number 23, and then it's and mm-hmm. Me, which is like a little kid and, you know. That's good. Yeah, I, I'm I, What I'm are you doing pitching to, uh, this to us, bro? I'm <laughs> saying you guys are big TV stars now. Maybe you can get shit done now. That's exactly it. That's a, that's a good idea. We're going to take that to Netflix. We're going to take that to HBO Max. We're going to take that to Apple, and uh, we're going to see what happens. We're really mm-hmm. excited. about Maybe this the three of them would simulcast it. Sort of like, <laughs> did you guys watch Live Aid when all the networks simulcast Live Aid, MTV and <laughs> they ABC? All come together. They all got together. They always share hosts. So the idea that you've got Millie Bobby Brown and like Jason Momoa <laughs> right. all, <together>. all introducing Twenty Three and Me. <laughs> this is so all exciting. the Avengers, <laughs> all the Avengers. <laughs> um, but guys, th- th- let's talk about this show. This show, uh, Auntie Don is a big old house of fun. First of all, no one knows who you are yes. uh, from this show. You've never been on this show. You've never been on any show. Uh, I've been trying uh, to ever. avoid it. Yeah. You, in fact, anytime a camera was brought out, you 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 just kind of scampered away. You, you shied away. You were like, nah, 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 and you kind of just ran off. And and it was it was trouble corralling you in order to get you on camera, but we were able to do it. We had to house train. They had to house train us like like animals. So like mm. we started a week before the shoot. We'd they bring us into a nice room and give us a little bowl of food, and they just bring in the camera a little bit. And they'd right. say, you know, you can pat it, you can, you know, and then they'd bring it away pretty quickly. And then by the end of the week, we were at a place where we weren't jumping up on people when they came mm. in. And uh, You guys got really used to it, though. I have to say, uh, by by the end of the shoot, uh, you guys were, like, shitting in front of the cameras. And we were like, you need to do this off camera. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, I, I, that was some of the best stuff we got. Yeah. We, well, we included it. I mean, we need the runtime of the episodes to be long enough. Yeah. So. Oh, God. Episode, episode six is rough, man. It's just a lot of shitting. <laughs> Look, so we only had money shitting. enough for five episodes, so six is just <laughs> full-on shit cam. But we got some big, big shit cameos, you know? Like We got some really yeah. big mm. names coming on shitting in episode six. So Paul F. Tompkins takes a dump that'll make you laugh mm-hmm. from the belly and the mind. Sure, yeah. He hits both. <laughs> He will he, love he hearing that both. about himself. The the log that drops out. Yeah, Paul F. You're like you're you're there, and he's doing he's defecating, and you're like, this is great. And then you go, I can't believe that's Mr. Peanut Butter. Like yeah. while it's happening, you're like, yeah, yeah, you, just, yeah. you forget. And while he's doing it, you're mm. laughing, but then you go home and go, I learned something too. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you're like you're like you're like you start looking at all the plastic that you're using, sure. and you go, I got to cut back. Sure, I got I got I got really got to cut back because there's so much of it in his feces. You're like, ah, uh, I'm eating too much plastic. <laughs> yeah, he eats a lot of plastic. <laughs> he really does. He's a weird guy. All day. He, the way he interacts with craft services compared to everyone else. Sure, is everyone else very is lining different. up, getting chicken, getting spinach, getting salad, Caesar salad. He's just like, hey, do you mind if I take your cup? <laughs> And eat this? He's a weirdo. <laughs> You're like, all right, all right, bro. 
Um, but uh, you, you guys are a uh, sketch and musical group from Australia. Tell it, give us a little biography of yourself. If if there were a biopic or biopic, depending on uh, how you uh, mispronounce it, how mm. how uh, <laughs> what, what what would be included? What would the first act be? What would the second act be? What would the third act be? We all met at acting school. We all wanted to be serious actors, but mm. um. Uh, so we've all played some of the great roles in Shakespeare's uh, work, in, in, in all of his work. Get him um, down. What do we got? We got Romeo. We got Othello. Yes. We have Hamlet. Yes. The, uh, yes. the, the melancholy Dane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you man. name it. You name it. We've prosed it. We've hit that iambic pentameter, but then very quickly found out that that wasn't actually a career that we could pursue. And we said, well, let's be funny. In Melbourne, there's a big international comedy festival. Isn't it weird, though, that they they lure you into these acting schools and go, come, learn Shakespeare, learn Shakespeare. And then when you get there, you're like, well, how do I make money at it? And they go, oh, you're not going to make any money doing Shakespeare. They're like, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah they're like you're 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 completely. It's the fucked. old bait and switch, or the bard and switch. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so, the bard and switch. Yes. Yeah, so now we're sitting here with a with a lovely uh, uh, college. Wait, you've guest. jumped. You've jumped over a lot. Yeah, you jumped, so you guys, man. You, you guys skip that too. <laughs> You met in acting school, and then now you're sitting here? That is pretty much it. I think we made a TV show in the middle there. So in the middle? Really this was recent. I was pretty distracted by the fact that a man was eating cups in the corner of the room, yeah, man. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but you guys, you guys started, uh, you started doing shows in, in Melbourne, and uh, uh, you also started uh, uh, putting videos up on YouTube. Is that uh, about uh, the sum of it? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, we yeah we were doing live shows uh, first, and then and then we uh, for community television in Australia, um, we made some uh, some short videos. They weren't very good. We put them on YouTube. Uh, that didn't improve them, but uh, people <laughs> people watched them, and uh, and then we went, hey, maybe there's something in this. And, and then, now we're uh, sitting here. And, and, and then we're now we're sitting oh, here. No, don't get to the. You're sitting here. You're getting to this too early. I need to know more. Come on, bro. <laughs> like, well, it's a good chair. I got this chair last week. I know. And I, it's, know I know you love your your house. You love your furniture. By the way, if I ever say a word that is not a word in Australia that you're confused about, like house or furniture, I have no idea what you guys call it there. Call me out on it. Say I don't know what that is, and I'll explain I what. I was it is. confused. What is a house? Okay. Oh boy. Okay. What? What is? I was confused about word. Word. Jeez. Okay. This is. We got to go backwards. We're first of all backwards. house. Oh my god. You know uh, uh, th- that feeling when you put on your clothes and they're the wrong way round. Oh, sca- uh, Wembley Dam Jam. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that how you say it there? <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Wembley Bam Jam. <laughs> the Wembley Bam Jam. Okay, good. I'm learning stuff here. Um, so you you guys uh, were, are a very popular. Uh, oh, look, I'm just taking that for granted because I've I, I went to Australia once and I never heard anyone talking about you. But <laughs> no, anytime, <laughs> what was that? But, well, I mean, I wouldn't have conversations where you would come up. You know what I mean? Right, I, it was usually right. about like, hey, what's a good place to go to dinner? And and people are like, well, have you ever seen that Auntie Donna show? <laughs> you know, no one ever well, interjected that way. That's we have it In Sydney, we have a three-course degustation fine dining restaurant. <laughs> you, so. do, you guys run this? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's sort of low-key. There's no no white linen or anything, but the food is of that caliber. It's very nice. Oh. It's great so it's, for a it's show casual meal. formal. Yes. Yes, absolutely. We're kind of the David Chang vibe. Yeah, of fusion. I love that. It's really lovely. Okay, <laughs> I, got, I got to go check that out. But in any case, you, you're a very popular sketch group in Australia. You suddenly uh, are called up to the big leagues, the show. This is Netflix. This is mm. worldwide. Um, yeah, we kind of just rang them up and they said, yeah, okay. It was pretty... Pretty straightforward, if I'm it being honest. It was the easiest pitch yeah. of our lives. A lot of people don't realize, and that's exactly how I did the Between Two Ferns movie, did the Michael Bolton thing. You just call them up and go, hey, do I want to do this. And they go, yeah, all right. There's Any, a phone number. Anyone can do it. It's not just us. Yeah, there's a phone. Yeah. It's a, a yeah. pitching phone number. Very different to our experience in Australia trying to get a show, which was people would just say, fuck you. We yeah. would ring up and we would say, we've got this idea of a show. And they would say, fuck you. Netflix were like, yeah, right. Yeah, it was it's very different. It's experience. almost the exact opposite, other than I guess the exact opposite of fuck you would be uh abstinent me. I'm not I don't know. <laughs> yeah. but. And that's what they said to me when yeah. I rang them. <laughs> abstinent me. <laughs> yeah. And that was that made me feel welcome. <laughs> okay. And 
I would say if you want the phone number for Netflix, if you've got a show, you've got an idea like 23andMe, you just reach out to Mark and Zach on their private social media accounts and they will give you that phone number. Yeah, yeah, we'll give you that number. And the best thing about Netflix is they'll remind you, if you forget to call them, they'll call and they're like, hey, are you going to give us a show? Is that going to happen? Well, it's really uh, nice. What's weird is, what's weird is like in the credits, they always list the number and it's flashing, but most people just skip forward to the next episode over the credits. Mm. They don't know, like anyone can have a show. Yeah. Anyone, literally, they're like, we will give you at least a few million to make a show. Here's the number, but they're skipping. They're, everyone's skipping. And that, by the way, that's not a million dollars for the budget to make the show that's like for you guys you like that goes in directly into your pockets these millions yeah that's right yeah, the that's budget right. is like other millions it's billions <laughs> yeah. every show is billions, billions of dollars, of dollars. <laughs> our show's budget they told us not to talk about budget they said to keep it on the low down <laughs> but our show's budget was four billion dollars uh, most of which we saw directly right that's in our pockets. That shit's lying in our pockets. Yeah. Hell yeah. So you, you guys have a, a sketch show. It's six episodes, but it's hard to describe a sketch show, isn't it? But why don't you guys try? It's, it's, we're very absurd. We're very heightened. Uh, we take very realistic observations, but just take them to real extremes. We're the There's Seinfeld A little bit of, of a sketch. narrative. Yeah. A little bit of mm. narrative, Sein- but not the, uh, a lot. You're mentioning Seinfeld a lot. Bro, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. We, we wanted to you guys. This is this a big American you, TV show. When you yeah. watch the show, when Sein- you watch the show, yeah. you'll be like, "This is just Seinfeld," but it's our version of Seinfeld. But is Seinfeld in it? That's where I'm getting yes. confused. He is. Yes, yes he is. Wait, in wait, wait, it. Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah, Jerry Seinfeld's in it. Yeah, how many Seinfelds are in this show? Seven. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I we got to check 11. out the show. I, there, wait, the 11? There was 11. Said? We had to cut down. We had to cut down four for, um, because we would, we wanted to get the MA rating and it was up in the R's. Oh, and, uh, God. Okay. Well, I, I, how did you break the news to those four Seinfelds? Uh, we just, we just shot him an email. <laughs> you showed yeah, them an email. Uh, wait. So you <laughs> wrote an email to who? Yeah. We have producers. They take. We have producers that take care of that. What we try to do is, you know, we're we're always the smiley face. That oh, the I see. Felt. So the producers wrote an email saying you're fired, and then you printed it out, took it over to their houses. Yeah, knocked on the door, sat down, had a cup of tea. You could do. You could go to people's houses, have a cup of tea. Then it was a different time. Oh, over. of course. Now you can just go to people's houses. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, you just go to people's houses. But back then you could just like you, you could go to people's houses. Yeah, right. People's yeah. Houses. The tea. So much tea back then. <laughs> but now not so much tea. Yeah. So uh, it's a sketch show who people are in it. I don't you know, I don't know what else you I didn't can realize say about this. we were on a podcast with Wolf Blitzer. All right. You're just attacking us from every angle, trying to get some sort of scoop. And we're not going to give it to you, Scrub. We're not going to give, we're not gonna give it to you. So, wait, you guys don't want people to be interested in your show? <laughs> oh, no, we very much do. Yes. <laughs> we very much would like that. Figure out what it is for yourself. We can't give you all yes. the answers. I hate spoilers. Guru. I hate spoilers. This is the thing. Don't tell them anything. That way they check it out and they're, like, blown away by whatever it happens to be. Exactly. And what it is is fine it's fine and i think you'll you know if you like this shit you'll probably enjoy that shit too so can i say though that mark isn't saying fine in that contemporary sense he's not saying it's fine it's okay like fine he's saying yeah he's (laughs) saying (laughs) like fine it's not it's not fine he's saying it in the in the old school sense it's it's a fine show well guys it's a it's an amazing show i don't know uh, that i need to tell people that uh i was one of the producers on it and uh we we had a great time and i'm i'm actually in it i don't know whether that's a selling point for anyone who listens to this show uh but uh it, it's a really good show six episodes and uh, absurdist comedy at its finest and a lot of great guest stars in it. Uh, uh, people from this show, Paul F. Tompkins and Tony Newsom and uh, Weird Al Yankovic and so many great people. Anyone else you want to? Of course, Ed Helms is also one of the producers and he has a big part in it. Yeah, well, I just want to say like we we um we were super passionate and really like we went gung ho making the show and we're really, really happy to get the chance to make mm-hmm. it. And we shot it away from all of our family and friends like in America. And we were trying to find people to be in the show and it was hard at points. 
And um, we were like, thank you so much for, you, you were, know. You were going door to door at one point, weren't you? Like, yeah. hey, do you want to be in a show? And <laughs> That's most of the cast in this show are people who open the door to, you know, solicitations at the door. So, you know, that's that, that might be a selling point for people. But also, thank you to you for being so generous and opening the door to all these great comedians. Um, and yourself, you were so fantastic. Are you so accepting just, an I, award right now? What is going on? It's it's like you're on stage yeah. holding something aloft. What is it? Oh, he's, he's being earnest. Let the man be earnest. <laughs> I don't know. Why, no, why in, so in America, in America earnest means someone who went to jail or goes to camp. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's a totally different thing. It's a t- but I I just really want to add I think you said that really well but oh boy. Um, I think I think it's going to be really exciting for Australian comedy group Auntie Donna to invite you into their big old house of fun He's just in doing our the new Netflix are you, yeah, are you original six part sketch is, series you keep glancing uh, Mark, down Broden and Zach uh, take that, viewers along for an absurdist adventure through their everyday the lives. AB Club article is I might be AB I might be reading yeah, the Netflix reading press it. release yeah yeah oh, All right. okay. Is, I just thought that might help. To be honest, it was a little more informational than uh, this whole interview has been, so I kind of appreciate it. <laughs> yes, and it was good. <laughs> oh, yes, you're and learning, my boy. Correct. <laughs> well, uh, Auntie Donna's big old house of fun. You can access it. You can stream it uh, on your Netflix devices. And uh, all six episodes are there for your consumption. And uh, some would say, "Ah, you want to parcel these out and uh, make them last over the year? You know, watch one every two months. And I would say, no, no, no. Watch them all right now. Otherwise, uh, (laughs) these these boys may not be able to make anymore. We need you all (laughs) to watch them right away. Watch them uh, immediately. Watch them over and over and over again. Uh, you will not be disappointed. It's a very funny show. I was very pleased to work on it. We need to take a break, if that's okay. When we come back, we're going to have... Now, this is interesting, guys. We have an educator. Uh, or, uh, have any of you been educated at any point in your lives? No, mm-hmm. no, never. Yeah, There's I could tell that. a single point. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have someone in food service. Have you ever eaten food? Uh, no. Unfortunately one, not, no. Oh, yeah. There was this one time, Zach, where I thought I saw you uh, eat something. I was munching on some chips, admittedly, earlier Was that today, you? That was you. Yes, yes, I thought that was you. Interesting. And only one time you didn't, didn't care for it, huh? Didn't stick? It wasn't for me. It, it, <laughs> um, it, it gave me this uh, surge of something. I, I was able to go about my day. And yeah. I, I didn't care energy. for it. Energy, energy, that's right. Energy. Yeah, so yeah. not for me, no. Well, we also have uh, someone in custodial services. Now, I know that you guys have done that before, if you know what I mean, what, what the person has got to clean up. So uh, <laughs> well, stop high-fiving each other. God, how strange. <laughs> um, we do need to take a break. When we come back, we'll have more uh, from Auntie Donna, more from Broden, Zach, and Mark. We will be right back with more Comedy Bang Bang after this. <laughs> I'm Kevin Hart, and you don't want to miss my new show, Inside Jokes, where I have the opportunity to talk to comedians in ways that I've never been able to talk to them before. Why? Well, because I believe that we're the most interesting people on the planet. Intimate conversations are not the way that you think it. I'm not talking about nasty talk. I'm talking about real talk, raw talk with great dialogue. Inside Jokes is about jumping into the minds of our amazing comedians. Inside Jokes is available now on Stitcher. Just tap the image on your screen and add it to your favorites. Welcome back to Comedy Bang Bang. We've had the Auntie Donna boys here today. Their show, Auntie Donna's Big Ol' House of Fun, is out this Wednesday on Netflix everywhere. And uh, Broden had to take off, but we're in good hands with Mark and Zach, who are still here. But it is time to get to our next guest. He is an educator. Please welcome Mr. Monroe. Scott, thanks for having me on, and it's an exciting time to be here. Where are you from? You sound like you're from uh, uh, the same place that these Auntie Donna boys are from. It's funny you mention that because I actually am from uh, regional Victoria, and I'm a uh, sports teacher based out of Warrnambool, Australia. Wow. It's funny you mention hands. It's funny you mention hands and the way we use hands because a lot of people out there, they're probably sitting at work all day on their bum, and they're just, you know, going about work. They don't know they can get off their bum 
and do some exercise. Use those hands maybe playing basketball or going down to a to a court, playing a bit of tennis. Huh. And fitness, like, that way you can get fitness into your life. Yeah, I, d- I didn't actually. You're right. I didn't know that. I didn't know that I could do that. But you're right. When I think about it now, it's like, yeah, I could just use these hands. First of all, I could use them to push myself up from off of the couch or or at least mm. grab someone's hands. Uh, a loved one maybe would help me uh, if I grabbed their hands and they pulled me off of the couch. But using those hands, I could get out of the, uh, uh, the couch and then use those hands to go do sports. Mate, mate, you bang on there. And I think you touched on something that's quite exciting, which is that idea of sitting on your uh, couch or chair and you're eating potato crisps and maybe some chocolate. That's actually not a healthy lifestyle. Mm-hmm. You crisps know, drinking are, crisps sh- are chips. I should just say that. Absolutely. Crisps are chips. And that's important to know as well. And if you if you're munching down on those every day, drinking munching is eating drinks. By the way. Yeah. And sugary <laughs> drinks, you know, like your Fantas, your Coca Colas. We don't They're actually really have a lot of Fanta out here, but yeah, Coca Cola. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. I don't mean to keep interrupting you. I just want to make sure that uh, the majority no. of our listeners who live in the this great country, the United States or Canada, another uh, greatish country. They understand. What you get Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I'd love to get over there and talk to you guys about fitness because I've dedicated my life to fitness and to saying to kids, do you know what? Those video games, they're lots of fun, but you're actually not engaging your body. You're not actually learning about your they body. They are really and fun though. You, are, they, you I, I have to admit, when you say they're really fun, they are really, really fun. Do you like video games? I personally I don't play them myself. I like to more put on a pair of shorts, get outside and See what these legs can do. I love running. I love kicking a soccer ball. These are the things that I like to do as opposed to sit in, sit in the dark, blinds down, fiddling away on a computer game. I prefer to play the real video game, which is football or soccer outside with friends. That's like life's video game or nature's video game. You know what I mean? Like what God created a football so that we didn't, you know, sit around our house playing video football or NFL draft or whatever it is. Just Madden Madden NFL draft. Is that is that a video game? John Madden drafts the NFL people? I believe so. I think it's the highest grossing video game of all time. Mm, okay. But let me put it to you. What if outside's video game, turn that around, flip it around, okay. flip it and reverse it. Okay. Your video your life Can I put my thing down your, while I do this? Yeah, put it down, <laughs> flip it, reverse it. Sure. Okay. Let me tell you something. Your vi- video game, life is life's video is the real life's video game. Are you just reversing it right now? Because I d- didn't quite understand what you just said. Well, that's why we need to use our ears. These two things in bet- next to our eyes. Right. Instead gonna- of listening to video games, we should be using them outside listening to other people. And what I say is like talking to students, they might be, you know, 15 years old munching away on a potato crisp, <laughs> not listening, Check. saying, Mr. Munro, what you're talking about, I don't care about that. I'm more interested in my fallouts. I'm more interested in my, um, in my, uh, lollipop kingdom game. And what I say to them <laughs> is that you're going to find yourself at 21 and you might be, you know, out of a job or, you know, a bit directionless. And you'll go, Mr. Munro was onto something there when I was 15 years old. Maybe I should have applied myself, got out, put some time into work. And I think there's a lot of, you know, comedy fans who listen to this program. Oh, I they hope might so. might be sitting there, sitting there. Yeah, absolutely. Eating a cheeseburger or maybe some chicken. You seem chicken. very, I got to say, you seem very focused on what people are eating while they sit down. I, I Do you, do you think people should eat standing up? I mean, I know you would maybe lose more weight doing, because you're moving around, uh, sort of like uh, Arden Marine's father, a uh, callback to a previous episode, but uh <laughs> I, I, but why are you so focused on people eating while they're? Di- but the other thing is, is it's hard to eat while you play video games. You got to get both of those thumbs onto those uh, buttons. You know what I mean? Well, it's it's mm-hmm. even harder to eat while you're playing a football game. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I don't see a lot of people out there on uh, John Madden's NFL draft. You know, uh, the real version, the real life version, non on turkey bones. Do you think Pele would eat <laughs> potato crisps before a game? Do you think that um, would he eat him after? I have no idea. I mean, I don't know when he eats. What's his schedule? The answer is no. The answer is no. They're going home. They're doing some sit ups. Maybe a maybe a bit of stretching. So he doesn't eat at all. You think? I think he might eat some fruit and vegetables at the end of the day. Okay. At the end of the day, I might. So he he if he has a game, he doesn't eat anything. 
during the beginning of the day. Then he does his game. Are games in the afternoon? That would be hard. If they're at night, that would be really hard. The, the cha- sport games change times during, you know, they can go, they can range. So from they're not at specific night. times. The, I mean, the time is usually scheduled. <laughs> the time is usually scheduled for these games and the, why the competitors are they at different will times? show this up. This is what I wanted to talk to you about. Why are sports <laughs> events at different times during the day? If I am in the mood to watch a sport event, I want to watch it at the same time every single time I watch one. I think you'll find there's a myriad of different reasons, one of which being scheduling, one of which being the uh, opportune time to compete. So a game that needs daylight will often occur when the sun is above you as opposed to on the other mm. side of what the What are planet. those daylight games? What do we got? Oh, I think you f- like football. <laughs> they have night games of football. Oh, uh, 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 or, or are you talking about soccer? Because I think they have night games there too. Maybe golf. Golf, uh, you don't see a lot of nighttime golf the- games. That's a great example. I'm going to put that up on the whiteboard. Golf is a daytime game. Mm. Hey, you know, instead instead of sitting there mashing buttons on your video game controller, eat some mashed potatoes. Yeah, absolutely. But do you know what's really important? It's a balanced diet. So you might have mashed potatoes one day of the week. The next day, have some Brussels sprouts. The next day, you might have some broccoli with your dinner. And then on Fridays, you might have a pizza. But that's just one day a week, you know? Sure. You're so, not having that every night. So pizza one day, mashed potatoes one day. Um, oh, this is just examples. This is not a set rule, Scott. Oh, okay. Like, this is something you can you can determine yourself. Well, these are all. And you might. N- yeah, of course. These are all great tips. Uh, 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 and you're and you uh, you teach uh, physical education. Is that what you teach? Yeah, absolutely. I teach at Brower College, which is a real school that I've just and uh, and you. and that's at Warnable College. And uh, what I'd say to you is, do you think the Rock is eating pizza pies every day? Just think about that next what, time you. What do you think he's down. eating? Is he eating rocks or what? I mean, what? I, I don't. I, I don't know him personally. Maybe you think I know him personally. I don't know why you bring him up. Well, I think you know we look to the rock because of his big, strong muscles, and 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 I think a lot of young men out there and and ladies. Do you would, think? Would say, do you think that we look at whatever has the biggest muscles in our line of vision? Well, I do. <laughs> so I go. I look at a room. I go biggest muscles there. That's generally what I do. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So, and then when, if The Rock ever steps in, your focus oh, just shifts muscles. right over to him. Bam. Like a laser. Yeah. Big muscles. And, you know, and, and that'll, you know, shift. Like, very rarely will my focus be off The Rock if he's in my periphery. Look, Mark, uh, Zach, yeah. you, you guys got to help me out on this. Is, is, I mean, mm. what, this guy, he seems to be all over the place, isn't he? Oh, he's an idiot. Oh, he's an idiot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what I was getting too. But what, I mean, it's a stretch that he got a diploma of education. He sounds like know he knows what happened. he's talking about for about ten seconds. Now he's just like looking off into space. Well, you know what? I hear this a lot from young kids. They'll I'll find him behind the back of the shed smoking a cigarette or a cigarello, and they'll be, "Oh, Mister Munro doesn't know anything about this. He's he's just some some jumped up jackaroo." And I'll say to them, "Come speak to me in ten years' time when you're working at the Woolworths." When you're working at the uh, at the Ralphs, as you guys, have. I don't know. Yeah. That, I don't know that any of these kids that you talk about. You have this fantasy about kids leaving your class and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years later thinking about something that you said. I think they've forgotten you, my dude. Well, <laughs> I, I gotta say, Scott, it's about fucking time someone talks up to this guy. Yeah, this is he's been he's been banging on about this ten years shit. For so long. Thank you. And it's really, it's refreshing to hear some. We forget about you the instant we stop talking to you, did, Mr. Munro. Did, did, was Mr. Munro your teacher? Yes, yeah. about 10 years ago. What? About 10 years ago. We, Is that why we you brought on him show? on? <laughs> That's actually, yeah, I wanted to say, oh, I checked up on these boys. And do you know what? Have you, well, the things I said 10 years ago, They've had an impact they, on you. They're still Absolutely. with me, and often now I'll think about them, and I'll go, "Gee, Mr. Munro, he was onto something, wasn't he?" Oh, huh. you know. <laughs> okay, well, you know, you'll, so you'll guess find that, yourself in ten years, Scott. Me in ten years? You'll be sit- yeah, you. God, in 10 I hope years, I'm still with us. <laughs> That's, that's not yeah. a given these days. It's a roll to the dice at this point. Isn't yeah, it? it's a one in six chance, maybe. But you think in ten years I'm going to think about what you said on this program? You'll be sitting there in 2030 on your uh, on your cool technology, and that technology for you, that'll feel to, that if we were looking at the technology that you'll be using in 2030, that'll feel mm. like magic to us now. 
Mm. You won't even understand how does that work, what's the connection to that. You know, people always, that say, will just be people second always nature. say that, but I think that if a time traveler were to come back with something that is 10 years from now and, and given mm. it to me, I wouldn't be like a caveman going, what? What is this? I would kind of look at it and go, oh, yeah, it's pretty intuitive the way it handles. Yeah, I get it. Like within a th- 10 seconds. Yeah, and you'd probably be like, oh, this is a lot like something from Minority Report or another sort of sci-fi from the time. Yeah, exactly. There'd be references. Like, yeah. I, I think if you went back in time and took a TV to a caveman, like, 10 minutes into it, a caveman would go, oh, okay, so it's just like, it's it's what happens over there is comes up on They've this put it in little here. box. Yeah, 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 I get it. Yeah, There's okay, this is cool. There's a lot of like wheels this. in this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And this is the thing I invented. <laughs> yeah. I invented this wheel. You got a few more going, and now it makes I understand. Yeah, I get there. I, I invented it. the wheel. I can see how just extrapolate for, on from this. I understand. There's, there's like at least it's... like twenty, thirty wheels in there. And right. That, that's and that yeah, they go. That's that's I that get makes it. Yeah. It, at first some... they'd be like oh. But then they just figure out. That maybe they'd like, be startled, but I don't even think the whole like, oh, I can't comprehend what I'm seeing. And he has a heart attack. I, no, I don't think that happens. I think it's just like a startled like, oh, how'd you get here in my place? Oh, what is this? Oh, oh, I get it. Yeah. Some sports are on wheels. Yeah. Can you name any? I'm trying to think of one. Let me put that to you. No, what do you what I don't know. Wheels? I don't have the <laughs> answers. <laughs> I'll give you one to start with. Bike riding. Yeah. Yeah, two. That's on wheels. Two. Mr. Monroe. Thin is, wheels. Um, is, is car racing? That's on the well, minimum amount one. of wheels in order for it to be called wheels instead of wheel. Mm, I've got, we've got two now. We've got car racing. We've got bike, yeah, bike riding. Let's have four. Yeah, car racing. No, we're not talking about how many wheels. We're just talking about different sports. I was. Six so, all together. <laughs> I was talking about that. All right, let's do that. Six wheels so far. Remember those little three-wheel cars in uh, uh, Artificial Intelligence? That Steven Spielberg movie. Yeah, with, so uh, with uh, so our good friend Haley Joel. Haley Joel Osman, yeah. Haley Joel and nine there wheels. Three car, there was three-wheel cars in that. So, so nine, that's, nine, that's nine, wheel, nine wheels, yeah. Nine wheels, great. You know yeah. like how uh, you know how in Gladiator times they'd have the horse? Chariot races. But they'd have the per- chariot races. Yeah. That's like a horse race. Those are racing two sport. wheels, so we're up to like 11 at this point, 11 wheels. Yeah, 11 wheels and also f- four horsey legs. Four horsey legs. Are we are counting like, horsey um, legs? Because we may have to go back to the ones we've already covered to see if horsey legs are in this. Well, they're nature's wheels. So, wait, we got yeah. bicycle <laughs> racing. Are there any horsey legs in that? It depends Unless if you've got the horse any horsey is, legs in the, in the boot, you know? Or if yeah. the horse is on the bike. Yeah, that's true. This is getting too complicated. Well, I think you've learned something today. I think we've all learned that some sport can be done on wheels, and we can thank the I cavemen for that. I haven't learned That's thing. a good point. Yeah, That's a I good point. That. Okay. All right. I get it. Thank you, Mr. Monroe. I get it. Thank you no very worries. much. Hey, guys. Hey, no worries. No skin off my uh, pickle. <laughs> what? Huh. Is that <laughs> is that something people say out there? No skin off my pickle? Or no. Uh, no? Yeah, I didn't think not. so. Would, would Mr. Monroe not. say that all the time when he was teaching you 10 years ago? Yeah, he'd just make up phrases. He'd get halfway through a phrase, realize it doesn't exist, and then just commit to it. Yeah. Yeah, and they just put in uh, like, foodstuffs at the end. Yeah. Uh, Fair uh, shake of the oh, sauce yeah. bottle. Uh, That's no Dave off my Jogowski, I'll tell you that much. There it is. <laughs> That's a weird one. I never heard any of those words yeah. before. Well, look, uh, we have to take a break, uh, Mr. Monroe. Can you stick around? Is that okay? I mean, I'd, lo- I'd love for some of our future guests. We have uh, someone in food service and someone in the plumbing industry. I'd love... I'd love it if some of those guests were to learn some of your knowledge. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, yes. <laughs> I mean, you had me at absolutely. You didn't even need to follow it up at yes, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Uh, all right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have more from the Auntie Donna guys. We'll have more from Mr. Monroe. We will be right back with more Comedy Bang Bang after this. <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we are back, uh, and uh, I got to say, Mark had to take off. Uh, these Aunt- Auntie Donna guys, I don't know what's going on with them, but they just keep leaving one by one. But we do have uh, Zach is here, and Mr. Monroe is here, and uh, we have to get to our next guest. He is in the food service industry. Please welcome Salvatore Michelangelo. Hello. It's so good to be here. Thank you for having me, Mr. Scott Ackerman. Uh, it's my pleasure. I, uh, uh, you know, I've had a lot of, uh, uh, people from, uh, the Canada of the East, Australia on the show. Uh, but you, yes. you sound like you're from, uh, somewhere different. Do you mind, uh, telling us where you hail from? 
I'm from Francofonte. It's a little town in uh, Sicilia. Have you ever been to Sicily? Uh, I I have never been to Sicily. I, in fact, was going to go this year, and then, uh, uh, of course, everything happened. Uh, oh. uh, has oh. Zach, uh, Mister, what, Mr., what Mr., happened, Mister? Mr., you don't know what happened. Where Where <laughs> are you right now? Are you there in Italy? I'm in the pizza shop. <laughs> you, you, how long have you been in the pizza shop? Uh, about uh, nine or ten a month. Oh, okay. I've just uh, been uh, here. Poke your head out. We've had there. a lot of uh, orders. Uh, nobody come in the door no more, but uh, a lot of people ring a ring on the phone, yeah. uh, do it the door a dash, uh, they say, yeah. I want the I would think on one of those phone calls, someone in the background may have mentioned something like the novel coronavirus. No. We've been oh. trying to tell him about it for years, man, for all months. And the whole time we've been trying to tell wait, him about it. Wait, just you, not listening. I don't, I don't mind to have a corona after work. Eh? I have a maybe 19, eh? maybe yeah. by a couple of 19? six pack. Eh? Oh, yes. I drink a lot of a corona. I like a, I put a lime in the one. I put the lemon in the one. Zach, are you, are you saying you know him? Yes. Yes. This is, uh, this is Mark's uncle. Oh. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's an old, old Italian guy. He lives, he lives in Australia now, just out of Melbourne, but, uh, yes. yeah, he, he makes pizza. Uh, we know him quite well. Oh, okay. Zach I've known her since she was just a little a pickle off of my own skin. A little pick. Oh, okay. God, a lot of pickle talk. <laughs> Do you have pickles on your pizzas? Eh, you know, if somebody requested, I don't like to put on too much bullshit there. I like the normal pizza and just the sauce and the cheese and the sausage and we, the pepperoni. We, we know, yeah, yeah. I mean, unless you have the pizza, well, before? unless there's some sort of odd ingredient, we know how pizzas are made. We know how they're constructed. We know the layers. We oh. know everything about it. So, oh, unless, Mr. Fancy Man, no, the pizza not really oh, fancy. So it's sorry. merely uh, pizza is actually know. a very cheap food. You find that uh, most uh, people. People tend to order them when they have large families because it's cheaper to feed their families this way. It's actually not very fancy at all. But it's actually not that healthy either. That's important to remember. If you're having pizzas every day, you can actually get quite a bit of a tummy. This is a bastard. He want to put me out of business. Do you know? Do you know Mr. Monroe here, Salvatore Michelangelo? Yeah, he always knock on my door. He come in and he say, "Hey, you can't be served this shit. Eh? You should have the salad on the menu. You like a McDonald's? Have the healthier options." Eh? And I say, hey, "Stick this one up your kudatsu." Okay, so you're going door to door telling people what they should eat and or serve? Yeah, I'm a prick. Oh, and, oh that's <laughs> wait, it's all making sense <laughs> <one>. now. Yes. <laughs> Everyone should have your body. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. You should have my body. M- my body is optimum. <laughs> you have you have the world's most perfect body. You have like body prime. Is that what you're trying to say? That's right. I can have body delivered to me any day of the week. Hmm. Yes. It's like a, the transformer. You're not the one now turning into a truck, eh? Uh, you know, look, you're speaking gibberish to me right now. I've never seen any of these oh, movies. I imagine they all turn into trucks. There's one called Bumblebee, that I know, because he had his own movie. But I, whether, hey, Bumblebee yeah. is a very good day. Yeah, which one was the racist <laughs> one? The racist, uh, they're all a little bit racist. Wait, in, what uh, way are the, what, in what way are all of them racist? Because <laughs> well, I know one they of do them a stupid, uh, is. They do a stereotype. Uh, they take uh, like an accent uh, and they make it a big oh, and, yeah. the, and it's a very inappropriate. Uh, but they have a Japanese one. They have a Kelsey <laughs> Grammar one. Uh, they have a one uh, who uh, not talk about the talk with the radio. Uh, it's a very and, racist show. Yeah. And Salvatore, you, you're really really not a fan of like racist caricatures are you man no no i like to do the pizza i like to eat the <laughs> pasta and i like to self sake and uh, i like to uh, call out the racism when i see it before things you those love. are my bigger four those are my bigger four what was the four. third one something about sake <laughs> a self sake self self suck <laughs> What? Did you know Mar- Marilyn Manson had the two ribs removed <laughs> so he could okay. suck his I'm own dick? I, I am glad that I that <laughs> stuck out to me because I was going to let it slide. You're number three. I let the slide all the time. You're In number two, three is, is, is giving yourself oral pleasure? Yes. You not do it the self suck yeah, the, 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 Look, Mr. Monroe, back me up on this. The, the male body is not meant to do that. Let me put it this way. If you're working at that level of core strength, then pat on the back, mate. So wait, so you, so you guys, you guys live in the same town, essentially. What an, what an odd town. 
Yes, it's a pretty fucked up, eh? <laughs> Mr. Monroe teach uh, at the school, eh? I work at the pizza shop across the road, eh? Zach, eh, fuck around in the gutter out of the front, eh? Sometimes yeah, with no boy. shirt. <laughs> You're a gutter He's boy. He's a gutter okay. boy. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we all know that about to Zach. Catch he have set up the rat traps, eh, try to catch the rat to make the burger. And, uh, cause try I work catch in, the uh, rat, make the burger. What is it? Okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Have you ever <laughs> seen a demolition of man? The, the, the movie demolition man or just a man whose job is to demolish things? Oh, you know, I'm happy for you to say the or yes and Look, I've seen whatever both, you so like. I just, I just want to be clear. I, I have, I was driving one day and I saw a guy and he had a box with a big plunger on it. And I said, oh, yes, look at that guy. That looks like, and then suddenly he depressed the plunger and the entire oh. building next to him just crumbled. So yes, I have yes. seen both, uh, the, the, uh, both times only once. In, in both instances, only once. Uh, the Sylvester Stallone movie saw it one time. Uh, the, the actual job, I've only seen it one time as well. Well, uh, in the, the movie <laughs> Demolition of Man uh, with the Slash Loan. So we're talking about the uh, movie. The, yeah, we're talking about the movie, okay. but uh, he blows shit up in uh, the movie. Because I, I don't know that I, I know any more information about the actual man that I saw. I, it was a passing glance. Uh, I was a little more distracted by the building coming down because I thought, is this safe? I'm driving right next to it. But so, so if you want to talk about that, I don't know whether I can access any more information. Was the Sandra Bullock there? Sandra Bullock was there, yeah. Why? How did you know that? Okay. Hmm. Was a Robert Schneider there? How did you know? Yes, both of them were standing in front of the building. I think you see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, wait a minute. I was watching the, the movie. The, yeah, the, the, the movie, the building coming down. Yeah, and Robert Schneider Robert there. Robert Schneider there. Sylvester Stallone. Sandra Bullock. Sylvester Stallone. Wesley they Snipes. Go Taco, they go to Taco Bell. They go to Taco Bell. They do. Yes. That's right. Okay. Yeah. No, you're right. I was just watching the movie. I didn't see the other version. That that happens all of the time. Yeah. That's what happened to me three or four times. Watching the movie. Us. No, I see a building coming down. Sure. Sandra Bullock is there. Sure. Robert Schneider is there. Wesley Snipes. Sylvester Stallone is there. Wesley Snipes is there. Of course. And I think, oh, I'm just a watch of the movie. But I'm <laughs> not there. They just get together sometime and oh, see wait, so the you're building actually, You're down. actually seeing them out in the wild. I, I thought I was seeing them, and yet I was watching the movie. You think you're watching the yes. movie and you're seeing them? This is like yes, we're sir. opposites here. <laughs> It's true. Do you self a suck? I, no, I'm the opposite of that. I, uh, 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 I, I have other people blow. Oh, that's a very good. You're so lucky. I've been trying for years to get other people to oh, suck. So you're a lonely but, person. I'm a very all alone. I have, uh, I have myself. I have my uh, nephew. Uh, I have my ribs uh, in a jar. I oh. always, I always look Why at. Why are the you keeping those remind. ribs in the jar? You, by the way, you ever tempted to put those on a pizza? Um, well, uh, that's so funny you mentioned that we have a hot new special uh, oh. at the pizza shop. Eh? <laughs> you come around, eh? you get a two large pizza, a garlic bread, eh? a 1.5 a Fanta. You know, I have a lot of a Fanta in America, I hear. We, uh, we don't have a lot of it. This sounds like a lot of food for me. I don't have yeah, a sugary family. Drinks. So. Sugary drinks are bad for you, and that's why America's in such good shape. Oh. This is, they don't have the fans. This and the prick, Pepsis. I hate this guy. This, this prick, I'm <laughs> bashing him. I'm a bashing you. I come into your house, like I'm, I give you a one or two on the schnoggin. Um, I do know that, uh, uh, Zach, you have to go, isn't that right? Yeah, unfortunately I do, yes. I have to go to the shops. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. But uh, uh, we do need to get to our next guest. Uh, he is in the custodial services I mentioned. He is a plumber. Please welcome Mario. Oh, it's a me, a Mario. I fix the pump. Oh, oh, wait a minute! This is a very racist. <laughs> I take the pump, I fix it, and then I take all the copper coin. Are you the famous Mario? Yes, I'm a Mario. I come from Tokyo and I fix the pop. But the sun pop is so big, I go into it and I take all the Cooper coin. You, we, yeah, we know. You're, <laughs> dude, you're famous. Do you know that? Yeah. Yes, uh, but I'm not. I take the Cooper coin. What is Cooper? By the way, I, 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 I don't know what Cooper coin is. What is Cooper? He's coin? taking the copper coins. Oh, copper no. coins. Oh. Cooper, <laughs> Cooper. Yes, the coin. 
Okay, the copper coins. You're taking the copper coins. Okay. Cooper, a, Cooper, a, coin. a, a Cooper is a, a kind of uh Oh, turtle. Jesus Christ. Mark, you're back. I'm sorry. I am. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll go. No, no, no. Stay. Hello. Stay. I don't know that we can take two, <laughs> two of these voices I right next to each other. I thought it would be you. a bit much. Yeah. Okay. So, see you later, be. Salvatore. <laughs> Bye. I can. If you want me to come back, you just let me nope. know. I'm. I'm just. Uh, I'm just out of the door. I'm just a sitter in the wet nope, room. No, probably won't. You. I, you won't be needed. You can. You can go on home. We're. Yeah. With one hundred percent certainty, we're not going to be calling you back. So. <laughs> so, Mark, you're back. So let, let's I'm talk. Back. Let's talk to Mario here. Uh, uh, I'm a video game expert, so oh, you, you know, so I can help translate certain things. Oh, great. Uh, okay. So Mario. things like Cooper Corn, you can tell me that he means copper coins. He's basically well, he's saying Cooper coin. So you're, 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 you're getting close. You're saying Cooper coin? Cooper coin. What is a Cooper coin? Yes. A Cooper coin is the most valuable thing in my world. <laughs> I go into the pipe and I take all the Cooper coin for me. If he gets a hundred of them, he can resurrect himself from the dead. Oh, okay. I mean, I was going to say, are coins really more important than your life? But apparently the, they are. They're about a hundred of them are equal to your life. I have lived many lives. I am a Mario. Many lives. How old are you? I was born in the fires of 1984, but there have been many Marios. Not that many lives. I was am- born earlier than that. I've only lived one. <laughs> I've lived longer than you. There are many Marios. There is the little pixel Mario. That is me. There is the Englishman with the brother John Leguizamo. That is me. Oh, yeah. I am all Mario. So wait, wait. So you, the, uh, we're talking essentially about a Mario verse. Is that we're talking about several dimensions of of different Marios, and you exist in each of these planes. I exist in every plane and no plane at once, for I am Mario, all Marios at once. Okay, so you're... It's a little it's, complicated. It's complicated, but I, I can only imagine. So you have some sort of sentient brain, which is allowing yourself to control all of the different Marios. I mean, there must be hundreds, if not millions, if not thousands, somewhere in the middle there, of these Marios out there in the world. <laughs> and you're controlling all of them? I am all Marios. You see this Mario, the Mario of your world. Sure, your avatar that I'm looking at right now. Yes, I am here in order to open the Nintendo Land in Hollywood. Oh. Oh, okay. Yes. I was wondering, yeah, you're you're here in the States and you're and there's a Nintendo Land open what a great time to open a theme park, by the way. <laughs> I know. Absolutely. Incredible timing. So you're here to open it. I'm here to open it, but I am also the Englishman with the brother of John Leguizamo. Yeah, I think we're talking about Bob Hoskins. Yeah, I know he was in Who Framed yes. Roger Rabbit. Is that who who we're talking? Yes, You're him. This is me. It, yes. It's a me, Bob Hoskins. I'm also- <laughs> it's a me, a Bob Hoskins, <laughs> and my brother, a John Leguizamo. Sure. Yeah. There are many Marios. Yes, there are many Marios. Can I ask you, Mario? What are you? What are you? So you're here to open Mar uh, a Nintendo Land, but wh- why are you on this show? I am on this show as a warning, a warning to Earth. A warning? Wait, to all of Earth? (laughs) I come from many universes. All of the Mario lands, they have been decimated by greed, by the need for Cooper coin. And you are on the same path. I'm not. You are, aren't you? I mean, (laughs) I don't even play this shit. No, all the universes are decimated. Earth is the last Earth, and I am here as a warning also to open a Nintendo <laughs> land at Universal Studios Hollywood. Which is more important, the warning or the... I think of the warning as sort of a um, pro bono work. I mean, I make the money from, from Nintendo Land. Sure, so it's, warning it's more like important. the icing on a cake. Do you have cakes there in, in uh, Mario Lands? I've never seen a cake. Uh, no, I don't think we have a cakes, but we do have a cart, a small car I drive around. Sure. And the goal is to win the race. So what are, what are the things, oh, by the way, speaking of races... That's four wheels. We covered this earlier in the show. Oh, yes, yeah, we did. Definitely. Oh. But well, what are the things that are in it's Mario? A fit, uh, fitness is really important. Oh, my God, Mr. Monroe. <laughs> we know. I'm a back. Get- no, get out of here. <laughs> okay. Ah. 
So <laughs> that's so weird that he just came, he just in came like back, even little. though he definitely was not uh, wanted or needed here. Um, this is incredible. I I hope that people <laughs> I hope that people out there can hear this this uh, incredible warning that uh, uh, Mario, the famous Mario. Do you know you're famous? By the way, you know you're famous, right? You like you walk Why? into a room and you turn some heads. I mean, it's not The Rock where we're like, <laughs> look at all those muscles. Okay, I'll look at this guy. But you know that like you, you your Q rating is pretty high. I am not that famous in most of the Mario world. There, I am just a plumber. I fix the pipe. Sure, you fix but the here, pipe. Yes. Here, yeah, this, and this is why you come over to this universe a lot, right? Because yes, you're like. I would say I'm known. You know, I, I have, um, I, I think of Mario Lens as sort of, uh, my retreat, you know, yeah. so I come here to LA. Why don't I you, do why meetings. do you ever go back to the, if, uh, personally, and this is me. Ooh. If I if I were a plumber, like I'm a uh, I'm podcast famous in this universe, right? Which is not yeah, real fame, yeah. but you know, I mean, it, it, there are perks. But if I were a plumber in almost every other universe, instead of being podcast famous, I don't think I'd ever go and visit any of those. You know, yeah, maybe it would be fun for like one week a year, not to be constantly not recognized <laughs> in a different yes. way. But but I, I but you know what I mean? Like, why are you even spending time over there? Well, you have to understand, in this world, there are big pipes. Oh. This world of pipes filled with caves of copper coins. So when I go to this world, the plumber is king. Mr. Monroe, this must be killing you because, you, you know, you came on this show earlier and you were talking about people playing video games and how what a waste yeah. of time it is and yeah. how people should be using those very hands that are playing those video games out into life's video game. And here is a video game character right in front of you. What, what are you feeling yeah. right now? It is killing me, but do you know what's killing me quicker? Sitting. It's the new cancer. So if you're sitting at home oh working God, away at your I desk, this guy. maybe try He's standing. He's a real God prick. This it. Yeah, you noticed it too, Mario. And you've just been on the show for like 10 minutes, 10 long minutes. He's such a prick. Give me a minute. I will tear him apart with my bare hands. Can I go home now? Is that okay? Yes, we wanted you to go home. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm just a champ. Gonna sit out the front in case you no, need me. No, we don't need you. Why just stop sitting okay. out front? Go home. You came in here and asked if you could go that. home. I said don't yes. Yell no. at me. I'm sorry. I don't mean okay. to yell. At you. God. I'm gonna go. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Yeah, we know you're going. We can see. We. He's a prick too. <sighs> so I don't know, on man. Show. Mark, I gotta say, like you're. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, these guys. You know? <laughs> oh, I know. I've got to do it. Hey, Scott, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad you agree with me. But uh, I think well, one thing we can all agree on is that we're running out of time and there's only time for one last feature on the show. It's time for a little something called plugs. It's time to get out of the tub. Your hair is thin and full of bugs. You watch the water drain like gutters in a storm. You're covered head to toe in bugs. Exterminator on the way. And you're still sitting in the tub. Your whole life has led up to this moment. Beautiful. That I don't think plugs were ever mentioned. I think a, a few episodes back, I mentioned that I wondered why all of these songs were about plugs. Just because they're the theme to our plugs doesn't mean they have to mm. mention plugs all the time. I'm getting, quite frankly, getting tired of the subject matter. But uh, that was uh, Bugs theme by Elijah Stoll. So thank you so much to Elijah Stoll. Uh, all right, guys, what are we plugging? Uh, Mark, obviously you and uh, your uh, uh, two friends who have left, uh, mm -hmm. you have uh, Auntie Donna's Big Ol' House of Fun on Netflix this Wednesday. Of course, don't watch it until you take a picture or a screenshot of you at the very end of this episode and send it to me. Mm. But uh, watch it immediately thereafter. Uh, six episodes, really funny stuff. I'm uh, very happy to have my name on it uh, at least twice. 
and uh, per ep. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to plug anything because I uh, I feel like I plugged uh, uh, the Auntie Donna show uh, more than enough. All right, let's close up the old plug bag. You start with a C when you want to close it up. You lead with an L and then you O. I want to thank you so much. Um, I know that uh, Mario had to go and Zach came back. Is that right? <laughs> uh, no, yes. yes. <laughs> Just, no, yes, yeah, he's gone. He's out of here. But the pizza man is back. Oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> well, um, uh, unfortunately, Broden never came back, but uh, we are here. And of course, you know, Mark is here with us. Mark, great to have you on yes, the show. Man. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Scott. It was an absolute pleasure mm. and an honor and a joy. I appreciate that. And Broden never came back, but uh, Mr. Monroe, all right, look, we'll give you 30 seconds to just <laughs> get all your bullshit out and just like <laughs> say whatever you're going to say, make us feel bad about our lives, whatever it is we're doing. What I mean, what yeah. is, how honestly, how much of your day is spent doing physical fitness? Is it really every hour that you're you're not sleeping? To be honest, I only do 30 minutes a day, but to be honest, that's all you need. You can get up in the morning, have oh, some corn flakes. God. Oh, my and you God. Can just do a little bit of a maybe some star jumps and a walk Shut around the block, up. and that's Shut actually up. enough to keep you active. Fuck, Fuck you, man. Fuck you. Fuck off. Fuck you. Fucking Fuck kills me. You. Oh, my God. Fuck you. You know what? Fuck, Fuck you, off. man. What? All Fuck this, off. All this energy, a lot of energy coming towards me, and do you know what? What? You've burned some kilojoules. Oh, some Fuck you. Off. Well, you, you. See where you are in 10 years. Oh, fuck. That's all I'll say. You will be thinking about it in 10 years. You will. He does have that effect, he gets unfortunately. You, man. 10 years later. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for uh, being on the podcast again. Thanks for having uh, us back for a second going. time. Yeah, Scott. Zach, Mark, it's, it's a shame what happened to Broden. Um, yeah. He, he really, uh, boy, 20, oh, he yeah, 2021 was bad for him. But uh, it's great to have you guys on. Easy, I, I'm sorry the, the group dissolved after, uh, you know, Broden really was the glue. But um, <laughs> I really appreciate having you guys on the show again. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised I'm still doing it, quite honestly. But uh, <laughs> but um, I wanted to have you guys on the show because I would, uh, something popped in my head the other day. Mm -hmm. What? What, what mm -hmm. happened? I was thinking, I was looking down at my fat stomach and, yeah. and I was like, remember what Mr. Monroe said 10 years ago? <laughs> wow. Oh, you're welcome, <gasps> Mr. Monroe. Monroe! <laughs> Miss Monroe. Can you believe 23andMe is the biggest show in the world right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah.